Lipstick is our solution for the lack of solid inverse kinematics in DAS Studio. Lipstick programmatically estimates the bend a limb would make for an appendage being a hand or foot to remain in place on a selected target node. The script can be applied to multiple appendages at once as long as they are following the same target. In addition, the script can attach an appendage to any node in a scene, whether the node is parented to another figure or is animated itself. This enables the script to create quite complex animations with figures and objects interacting with each other throughout the animation. So in my first example that I'm going to show you here, you'll see I've got a Genesis 8 male figure. There is no animation applied to him at all. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this chap dance. So with the Genesis 8 male selected, I'm going to first of all add a very basic animation. You'll see if I click on the hip, the animation is just a couple of frames and it's just basically moving him from side to side. The first frame, frame 0 and frame 60 are matching so that uh, we'll be able to have a looping animation. So the first thing we're wanting to do is we're wanting to have his feet placed on the ground. Now to have his feet placed on the ground we ideally need some sort of node that we can have as the target. What I tend to do is I use a, a new primitive. I'll just use a plane with the Y positive being up. The size of one meter is fine and we go accept. So now we've got a, a ground plane that we can use uh, to stick his feet to. So to run the, anima to run the uh, script, all we need to do is we need to select the items that we want him to have followed and then the target. Uh, that target always needs to be the last one you select. So in this case, we're wanting both of his feet to stick to the plane. So what we would do is we'd select his one foot, uh, command click on a Mac, control click on a PC to select multiple. And finally, our final selection is the plane itself. So you'll see over here, we've got a left foot, right foot, and the plane selected. Now let's run our script. We are going to be presented with the interface, which says that we've selected the following appendages to follow the target plane. Uh, right foot and left foot, that is absolutely correct. We are going to do it across the entire animation range. You would be able to uh, select either the animation full range, the play range, or a custom range. In this case, we're going to do it from 0 to 60 across the full range. We're going to create a keyframe every one frame. The, you can change this, but uh, creating a keyframe every single frame just ensures that everything is uh, perfect. Okay, we're going to leave all the other options the way they are at the moment, and let's run our process. You'll see immediately at the bottom there, a whole lot of keyframes have been created, and gives us a bit of a summary. And let's have a look at what it's created and look at that our feet now remain perfectly in place even though the hips move and with just a couple of simple clicks we've already got a very basic animation of our chap doing his dance okay so now we're going to make it a little bit more complex we're going to add a pose to his upper body and his hands so placing his hands on his thighs now obviously if i run the animation now his hands aren't going to uh, remain in place at the mall at all because um, there's obviously no animation added to them. So what we're going to do is each each hand is going to be parented to or targeted to uh, the thigh. So we'll first of all select the right hand, command and select the the right thigh, so that the two are now selected there. When we run our script again. You'll see we've got the following appendages to target the thigh, and it's the right hand, which is correct. Let's process. If we run it again, you'll see now look at that right hand is working beautifully, where the left hand isn't. We haven't done that one yet. So let's target the left hand to the left thigh. We run our limb stick again. Fantastic, looking good. Okay, now let's let's add a little bit more complexity to the scene. So when, now we're going to actually add um, an animation to the torso. And basically I'm going to take a couple of these torso um, bones and I'm going to animate them so he moves side to side and does a little bit of a twist. 
So once again, you can see the hands are not working and that's purely because the torso actually affects the position of the hands. So let's run our hands again. So first of all, with the right hand, and then we can do it again with the left hand. Uh, I, I want to turn off the show, sorry, but I still do want to process. Okay, and look at that. Now both his hands are, are working very well. Now let's say we wanted to make it even more complex because, hey, why not? Let's say we want to take this floor plane and we we want to add a bit of an animation to that floor plane too. So at the moment the floor plane is just in one position. If we add an animation to that floor plane, so just over a couple of frames, I'm just wobbling that floor around a little bit. You'll see I'm, I'm doing the X, Y and Z rotate. I'm also moving it up and down just to show that it's all working well. And we're going to now have to redo our, our feet. Now remember, as we redo our feet, it's going to affect the thighs. And because it affects the thighs, it's going to affect the position of the hands. So we're going to have to rerun a couple of our, a couple of our animations again, or scripts rather. So first of all, let's set both feet and the plane. We run limbstick. And that has fixed our feet. Look at those feet, they're staying perfectly on that plane even when the plane twists. Okay, now we're going to have to just do that again for each of the hands. Do that one and the second hand. And look at that, with just a couple of clicks we've got the feet perfectly following the plane as it wobbles around. And we've got each of the hands perfectly following each of the thighs. Okay, so for this animation, I have a figure that I want to catch a ball. It's also 60 frames, and you'll see at frame 20, the ball reaches the guy's hands. And then he does a bit of a dip to take the weight. But you can see the hands aren't following at all, and the feet are also not following. I've also got on the floor plane, there's a bit of an animation, so there's a bit of a wobble going on there on the floor, just to add a bit more complication. So, first thing we're going to do is apply to the feet, select both feet, we run limbstick. The feet we want to do across the entire animation. So there we go, they're working perfectly. But now the trick is we want the hands to only be animated from 20, frame 20 onwards because that's the point at which he catches the ball. So if we select our hands again, zoom out so I can get the ball. Okay, so we've got the two hands and the ball selected. When we run limb stick again now, if we change uh, to frame 20, sorry, 20. So now we're doing a custom frame from frame 20 to 60. And you'll see no frames have been created up until frame 20. And then from frame 20 onwards, the frames have been created. And uh, the result is he catches the ball and his hands follow perfectly as the ball moves. So that's a good example of how you could use the custom frame to do an animation calculation only from a certain point in the animation. Okay, in this example I'm basically taking our previous animation uh, with the, the chap bouncing around. I don't have the floor but I do have his hip movements and what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting him to also be uh, holding this what's going to be a steering wheel with this torus. So you'll see the torus actually has, let me actually go into wireframe mode so you can see better. You can see the torus actually has a bit of an animation going on as well, turns left and right. And in this example, all we want to do is we want his hands to follow that torus or steering wheel. So we just select his hands, select the steering wheel. We run limb stick. We're doing it across the entire animation. And simple as that, we've got one happy driver.
Okay, in this example, I want my guy to get himself a bit fitter and do some working out. So I want him to do some push-ups off the that ground plane. So you'll see I've only got one animation frame there, and it's basically his hip. So at frame 15, his hips are lower and slightly rotated, and then they go back up to give me a uh, looping animation. So all I want to do is I want both his hands, both his feet need to be attached to the floor plane. And simple as that, we've got him working out. Okay, to talk through some of these final examples, we have two characters walking hand in hand. His right hand is attached to her left hand. In this example, I am animating the Ark of the Covenant, and each of the characters has their hand attached to the pole. And in this one, each of the feet is attached to a pedal, each of the hands are attached to a handlebar, and the bike is animated. <laughs>